This is perhaps the last game the Raiders will ever play in Oakland. Leading 16-3, it looked like they would send their loyal fans off on a high note. Then, Gardner Minshew happened. The Jags scored two late touchdowns, and the last play in the Coliseum was a failed Hail Mary. The Raiders' last decade and a half in Oakland was a comedy of errors, and this was just the last straw. But why was this the end? Why did the Raiders have to pack up and leave? Why did the Raiders fail in Oakland? The Oakland Raiders were an original AFL franchise that began its existence in 1960, playing in San Francisco's Kizar Stadium, alongside the 49ers. The Raiders won just nine games in their first three years, and then they hired this guy, Al Davis. Before he was the owner and a team executive, Al Davis was just the Raiders head coach. Raiders moved into their new Coliseum in 1966. They entered an era littered with a larger than life head coach named John Madden and a roster of stars and Hall of Famers, culminating in two Super Bowl victories in 1976 and 1980. The same year they won their second Super Bowl, Al Davis, now the team's owner, attempted unsuccessfully to move the team to Los Angeles. It would take two more years before he could move the team to LA, but Davis relocated in spite of a lengthy legal battle and a ton of pushback from Commissioner Pete Rozelle whom Davis fought with during the AFL-NFL merger. Davis wanted to move to Los Angeles for a simple reason, to build the Raiders brand. Davis didn't want his team to be known as the Oakland Raiders or the Los Angeles Raiders or any other city for that matter. He wanted his team to be the Raiders, a global singular brand not tied to any certain locale. I mean, just why not call them the frickin' Raiders? Singular or not, they had to play somewhere, so it only made sense to move to the second biggest market in the country. Davis and the Raiders won another Super Bowl immediately after their move to the LA Coliseum, but Al could never wrestle a piece of land big enough to build a new stadium. Davis's thirst for branding was never satiated without a new stadium in Los Angeles. The team could no longer sell out games, and Al Davis claimed that the lack of fans cost his team four to six points per game. Seriously blaming the fans for lack of scoring output? In 1995, both the Raiders and the Rams left Los Angeles. Davis originally tried to move the team to Sacramento in a deal that would have made him owner of the Kings as well as the Raiders, but the proposed move fell apart, and in a case of deja vu, Davis resettled in Oakland, in the Oakland Coliseum. And so the autumn wind returned home. The relationship between Davis and the city of Oakland was rekindled when the city offered to house the Raiders following the 1994 Northridge earthquake. But it didn't take long before Davis and the city of Oakland started beefing. The Oakland Coliseum sued the Raiders over their lack of naming rights on the stadium, and Davis countersued them right back. The two sides had trouble cooperating, a big reason they would never build a publicly funded stadium in the Bay Area. And even though they were in Oakland, Davis still wanted exclusive TV rights in Los Angeles, meaning every one of their games would be broadcast in that market ahead of much closer teams like the San Diego Chargers. He kind of had a case since there was no team in LA, but to have broadcasting rights in a market he wasn't even present in was kind of absurd. He still sued the NFL and fittingly lost. In fact, there was a lot of losing that went down during that second stint in Oakland, save for a few blips of success. The Raiders were hot in the early 2000s, riding MVP Rich Gannon to a Super Bowl appearance in 2002, but that was the official end to their glory days under Al Davis. Davis watched as John Gruden, the coach he traded away, hoisted a Lombardi as the Raiders slinked off the field. Davis had always made some questionable decisions like the long-term benching of Marcus Allen, but brilliance was quickly turned into football insanity. He prioritized speed above all else, meddled in play calling, and thought it was a good idea to draft Jamarcus Russell. He also hired Lane Kiffin. For seven years in a row from 2003 to 2007, the Raiders lost double-digit games. Even their stadium was a complete fail. Davis added a 20,000 seat upper deck in 1995 to the Oakland Coliseum, fittingly named Mount Davis, making it the ugliest and oddest configuration in both the NFL and the MLB, providing a bizarre backdrop for the team's failures. The Raiders' swagger eroded and was replaced by an ever-present feeling of shame. 
The team was now as bad as Al Davis looked, and that's pretty bad. The Raiders found brief confidence, and Al Davis passed away in 2011, knowing that the franchise had made it through its darkest days. Or had they? Yo, I just got back from Vegas, and it was a lot of fun except for this part. But there's two things you need to know when you're in the desert. You have to hydrate, if you know what I mean. That's why I wanna tell you about Liquid IV, an electrolyte drink mix that allows you to hydrate two times faster than water. That's clutch when you need to hydrate quickly, either from being in the middle of nowhere or waking up not in your hotel room, or both. Damn, son. You might have heard of Liquid IV before, but check out this must-have flavor, Golden Cherry. Just mix it up and let the cellular transport technology take over to let your body rapidly absorb both water and the bonus vitamins included. I liked it when I was out hiking. It allowed me to recover quickly and move on to the next adventure. So after this video, head on over to liquidiv.com from the link below and use code 5 points and get 15% off your order. Again, that's liquidiv.com from the link below and use code 5 points spelled out to get 15% off your order. You can also cop it at Costco. Drink smarter. Liquid IV. Enter the sun, Mark Davis. He of the worst haircut known to man. He of permanent residence at P.F. Chang's. Though P.F. Chang's is kind of fire. Mark Davis and his mother inherited the team after his father's death and immediately had a plan. He was going to get the Raiders the hell out of Oakland Coliseum by any means. By 2015, Davis was in communication with city reps from Los Angeles, San Antonio, and Las Vegas. Davis attempted to link up with the Chargers and build a shared stadium in Carson, but Stan Kroenke and the Rams stepped in and politely nudged the Raiders out of the LA market. And even though he was talking to other cities, Davis was still trying to mend fences in Oakland. Attendance was down at the dilapidated Coliseum. The upper levels had to be tarped off and the stands were a hotbed for world star hip hop videos. In 2013, Davis proposed a 56,000 seat stadium in the East Bay that would have cost an estimated 800 million. Now, there is a little something you need to understand. Davis is not a billionaire. He's worth only about $500 million, which is the lowest net worth among NFL owners. So when Davis said that he needed funding from the city to build a stadium, he actually meant it, unlike most owners who just do it because some cities are dumb enough, willing enough to do it. The city of Oakland was not so receptive. In 2015, Oakland Mayor Libby Schaff said she cannot support spending a dime of public funds for a new stadium. According to her, the city didn't have a few hundred million dollars lying around. I mean, it is Oakland we're talking about here. But as Davis and the city kept drifting further apart, something crazy happened. The team started winning. The 2014 Raiders were a complete dumpster fire, but the 2015 Raiders found their footing with seven wins. In 2016, under head coach Jack Del Rio and third-year quarterback Derek Carr, Oakland won 12 games and earned a spot in the playoffs for the first time since they lost the Super Bowl in 2003. It might not be a coincidence that following that 12 and 4 season, the city of Oakland scrambled and found 600 million between the couch cushions, most of which came from private investors. By then, it was too late. Las Vegas had put together a package that included $750 million, fully taxpayer funded, to build the structure that would become Allegiant Stadium, which ironically was one of the failed stadium designs for LA. The move by Las Vegas was pretty genius too. Rather than putting the burden entirely on the Nevada residents, state lawmakers increased the hotel tax by 0.88%, meaning out-of-towners would be the ones footing most of the bill. I mean, if you're dumb enough to play the slots in Vegas, you should pay for the Raiders to be there too. In early 2017, the move to Las Vegas was finalized. And then the Raiders played three more awkward seasons in Oakland. There was a false send off in 2018 when the Raiders believed they would be able to play one season in either San Francisco's Oracle Park, Santa Clara's Levi Stadium, or UNLV's Sam Boyd Stadium, which was somehow even more unfit for pro football than the Oakland Coliseum. Eventually, they came back for one go round in Alameda, and their new send off featured a crippling loss to the Jaguars that dashed away any hopes of making the playoffs. The Raiders left Oakland not with a bang, but with a sad sad whimper. The Raiders' failure in Oakland came down to two major factors. The first involves the legacy of Al Davis and the idea that the Raiders were more of a global brand than an Oakland one. 
Michael Rosenberg of Sports Illustrated wrote that the Raiders are the rare sports team that can honestly say leaving a city is not a betrayal of its brand, but an affirmation of it. They have been willing to pack up and go for almost four decades. Like their namesake, the Raiders are nomads at heart, and it's in their nature to keep moving. The second factor was, of course, the Colosseum, a five and a half decade old eyesore of concrete known for its tarped off sections and massive sewage backups that would spill into the opponent's lockers. Oakland was unwilling to play ball until it was too late when they were beaten to the punch by a city that's become increasingly hungry for professional sports in the last half decade. The Raiders brand persists in their new home. The team and the league have forgotten Oakland, a city that has nearly lost pro sports altogether when the Warriors moved across the bridge to San Francisco. And now they are barely hanging on to the Athletics, who, like the Raiders, have been flirting with a move to Vegas. The autumn wind no longer blows in Oakland. Play slips, time for Carr, sends it skyward to the end zone, and broken up, that's it, come from behind win for the Jacksonville Jaguars.